Number 26, how to remember the patterns in oxide pH across the table. Well, sulfur dioxide is an acid rain, so that's acidic on that side. And sodium oxide, well, sodium's an alkali metal, so it's a, a, a alkali on the left. The pattern in melting points, OK, this graph is a little squiffy, but uh, the pattern is correct. The first three are metallic bonding, they're metals, and it increases because you're adding electrons to the C and the iron is increasing in charge, so there's more electrostatic attraction. Silicon has four strong bonds, four strong covalent bonds, and that gives it the highest melting point. These next four should be a little lower down, but their order looks random until you realize that uh, more electrons means more van der Waals. So sulfur out of those four has the most electrons, so it's got the highest melting point. More electrons, more van der Waals. Argon has the least electrons. Low, least electrons means lowest melting point. OK, ionic bonds are due to electrostatic attraction. All bonds are due to electrostatic attraction. It's plus attracting minus. Cation, anion, well, just remember plus cat. The plus one is the cation. These are the uh, polyatomics you need to know. Oh, nitrate's there twice. And there's only one plus one you need to know, ammonium ion. Ammonium ion, there's the Lewis structure. No, it's not. You have to put a plus in brackets, otherwise you lose a point. Carbonate looks like it's not 120 degrees, but it really is because of resonance. Don't be fooled by its apparent asymmetry. There is resonance, uh, resonance there. They love carbon dioxide at the IB because the bond is polar. There's a difference in electronegativity that's quite big between oxygen and carbon, but the molecule is nonpolar. Nonpolar means there isn't a difference in charge at each end of the molecule. You need to know about the three allotropes of carbon, diamond, graphite, and Buckminster fullerene. Diamond is tetrahedral, graphite has layers with electrons delocalized in between, and Buckminster fullerene is a sphere. Van der Waals bonding is proportional to the number of electrons, and also the shape, if it's a long shape, or if it's a sphere. If it's a long shape, think of sticky sausage. High surface area, much stickier. And if it's a spherical shape, think of it as non-sticky balls. Metallic bonding, no one seems to be able to define that ever. It's positive metal ions in a sea of electrons. That's metallic bonding. Freely moving charged particles. Anything that conducts electricity must have freely moving charged particles. Helium as a gas, nope, they're not charged. Solid sodium chloride, nope, they're not freely moving. The bottom two, yes, freely moving charged and particles. Delta H. Is negative is exo and plus is endo. Don't get those two confused. Here's an energy diagram. That's time. No, it's not. It's reaction coordinate. Once the IB said time in the mark scheme, and they were wrong. It's reaction coordinate. Delta H equals MC delta T. The MC and delta T refers to what is being heated, not what's doing the heating. It's what's being heated. They'll often give you numbers for both. Don't get them confused. And this never works. The experiment's rubbish. And they love to ask why. Well, first off, delta T is too small. You're losing energy because you can't get good insulation. And C, well, you know what? You're not just heating water. You're heating air. You're heating the container. And all that's going to ruin your delta H. Average bond energy, they like to ask that definition. It seems like you just say the words, and that's the definition. But no, you have to say it's over a range of appropriate bonds. That's their way of saying average. 43. Endo's breaking bonds, exo's making bonds. Put your hands together. You're making a bond, and you're releasing energy. Hands together, making a bond, releasing energy. Rate of reaction, once they did this cheeky trick. They changed the time unit from seconds to minutes. No one ever got it right. Everyone lost a point. Activation energy. If you don't say it's the minimum energy for a reaction to occur, that's wrong. You won't get the point. Number 46. Rate of reaction. What can I increase that will slow the rate of reaction? Well, the only two things is activation energy and surface area. Increasing those decreases the rate of reaction. Equilibrium has the reaction finished. Nothing seems to be happening. Nope, it's still continuing. It's dynamic. Things are still moving. It hasn't stopped. Kc is C over A times B. So if I double C, I double Ka. Surely, that's right, isn't it? No, that's completely wrong. Only thing that changes Kc is temperature. Only thing that changes Kc is temperature for a reaction. 49. 
This is a homogeneous reaction, they're all gases. If I increase the pressure, it shifts to the side with the least particles. Wrong, you've lost your point. Least gas particles. And 50. A catalyst increases the forward and reverse reactions equally for the second point.